Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and today I've got a table full of Christmas light controllers in front of me. And we're going to talk about in this video the anatomy of a controller and should you build your own Christmas light controllers or not. So I've been around pixel controllers for quite some time now, uh, first in the stage lighting world and now, of course, for the past few years in the Christmas lighting world as well. And there's some interesting and key differences and a little bit of history to go through that I think will help you understand how we got to where we are today and how you can find the best controller uh, and, and build it for your needs or, or maybe buy something pre-built. We'll talk about that. So when it comes to controllers, uh, where I come from in the stage lighting world, when you buy a, a pixel controller, most of the time you're buying a finished product, meaning it's a unit, it's got a case, it's got a power cord, uh, sometimes detachable, sometimes not, and you plug it in and go. Or maybe it's got everything except the power supply, but again, it's in a case, it's ready to go. When I moved into the Christmas lighting world, I realized things are a little bit different here. Um, we've got... Uh, controllers you buy like this, a Falcon uh, F4, right? Or a Culp or receiver boards. And all of this stuff, by the time I joined the hobby about 2016 or 2017, um, you could buy these controllers pre-built. And prior to this, folks were actually buying uh, controller boards, like the, the circuit board, and all the components, and actually assembling it all together. Now, for me, that's not my idea of a good time, and so I like that the controllers are pre-built. But, in the Christmas lighting world, they still don't build them into an enclosure. And uh, something to, you know, a case, per se, to protect that controller. And there's kind of two big reasons why. Um, the first, of course, is, well, three then. Okay, the first is it drives cost down, right? The second, and I think is pretty important, is that... Everybody and every display has different ways that it needs to be configured. Some folks are going to have massive uh, yellow lidded totes, those black totes with the yellow lids, that have multiple large controllers in them, lots of power supplies. Other folks are going to use smaller cases like, like these or even smaller ones. Um, they're going to have uh, single controllers in each case and maybe have a number of cases like these ammo boxes with receiver boards in them and the like okay and it really depends on your needs and so uh you know selling the board without being in a case is also a way to make it customizable for your needs and then the third and final reason is that uh typical cases you know in, in pre-built controllers in a case from a stage lighting uh company is not going to be waterproof. It's not going to be rated to be outdoors because that's just not the application. But in Christmas lighting, guess what? Like 99% of what we're doing is outdoors. And so we've got to put that in an outdoor rated box. So then the question becomes, okay, um, what do we put in a controller box, okay? Um, you know, what goes in there? And the basic gist, and we'll go deeper in our next video, is you're going to need a controller, you're going to need some way to power it and possibly power other pixels, and then you may need other controllers, receivers, etc. Okay, and then you need a box, right? And that box is generally going to be waterproof, though some folks uh, do a non-waterproof box in their garage, for example, and that's perfectly valid. Okay, and so the biggest question uh, when people are first starting out, I think, with controllers are, okay, should I go buy these boards completely bare, go find myself a cable guard box or similar or a bud box or a similar box, or should I just go buy something completely pre-built or is there a hybrid ap approach? And that's a great question. So to answer your question, yes, um, all of these are valid options, right? And I got to tell you that the further I go along and the further this hobby matures, the more of a fan I am of going at least partially pre-made. Let me talk you through why, okay? Um, this here is my first controller that I built, uh, really, well, my second controller, but the first controller that I built that I still use today, it's a Falcon F48 in a cable guard uh, CG1500 box, which is a very popular enclosure, comes from the telecommunications industry, okay? 
I cut down, and I have a video about this, where I cut down uh, dollar cutting boards from Walmart or the dollar store, and I mounted all my stuff in there. It, it took me a, a good solid long afternoon to lay everything out, figure out how it would fit, my Falcon, my receiver board, my power distro, wire everything up, test it, and be good to go. Okay? Contrast that with this controller I threw together in like five minutes the other day. Again, it's a little smaller, but I could have done it with the Falcon. It's got a Culp in it, a K8, I think, K16, K8 on this one. I, I built it with a K16 too at one point. Um, and I took a pre-built board from Wired Watts, okay? You buy these guys, uh, different people sell them. I bought this one from Wired Watts, no affiliation with them. I just have bought stuff. Um, and these are pre-drilled and pre-cut to fit right in there to mount pretty standard stuff. They have different ones, like there's a Culp one, there's a Falcon one. Um, and I gotta tell you, you know, these things are like 10 bucks. You don't have to find the screws. And they enabled me because they come with the, the pack of screws that you need uh, to mount it in there and to mount the stuff to it. Um, I think it's a really good approach. So on the topic of, of build or buy, um, there's a whole spectrum, okay? Just to introduce you, if you're new to this, there's also a company called CCL Controllers, and I know there's some others, that offer completely built controllers. So if you want a complete built controller like this, actually, he does a nicer job, um, you can buy that from, from CCL Controllers. You can also buy from CCL kits to assemble it yourself. And it's a lot like buying this wired Watts board, but it's even more complete in the sense that He's laid it out, he's designed the components, he's sold you all the components he can, like the cold controllers you gotta buy separately, um, but everything else comes together, right? You get the box, you get the cable pass-throughs, you get all the wires you need, you get the labels, and the box is pre-drilled and, and you're ready to roll. So the question becomes, should you build your own or should you buy pre-made? Well, as most things in this hobby go, I, I think it really is a question of uh, whether you want to spend the couple extra bucks and have it done for you, partially or wholly, or rather, you'd want to save, you know, the, the extra money, and again, it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis thing, and, and, and build it completely yourself. For most people, I would probably recommend the hybrid approach, which I'm doing now, just buying, you know, these wired Watts boards, mounting your stuff up in them again this takes like five minutes boom stick it in a cable guard box or whatever box you've got and you're ready to rock and roll to test it and to be off to the races okay but your choice is yours um hopefully this video especially if you're new to the hobby gives you the insight you need to start thinking about okay how do i mount these controllers in boxes etc be sure to subscribe here and come back next week because we're talking next week about what components go and can go in a controller box and how you choose the right ones for your needs. So don't miss out on that there. All right. We'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks.